Christ Jesus, ought not you be loose today? Shouldn't you be well today? Shouldn't you be out of debt today? Shouldn't your financial situation get healed today? Glory to God. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Southwest Live. Well, we got a pretty rowdy crowd here this morning. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday here at the Believer's Convention. Uh, it's a great day. It's going to be a good day. It's not just any particular Wednesday. There are some really special things that are happening today here at the Believer's Convention. We've got a special announcement coming up a little bit later on when Brother Copeland uh, takes the platform. And we've got some great guests on the program this morning, so let's get right to it. First of all, welcome my guests, Gary and Drenda Cassie this morning. Thank you. Oh, chair caught me. How are you guys doing this morning? Doing good, morning. thank doing you. Great, great to be here. Well, uh, it's not like you guys haven't been doing anything lately. You, yes. <laughs> you, you were telling me you don't, you haven't seen your home much lately. You, no, we've been going. We've actually been here at EMIC. You've as been well. here. These financial revolutions that you guys have been doing have absolutely changed the lives of people all over the world. Yeah. Did you? Yes. Did you know that was going to happen when you started it? No. <laughs> not I mean that. When we got out of debt, then you know, of course, yeah. we wanted to help others. Right. Right. Uh, you, your story, obviously you tell it all the time at your seminars that you guys were the poster children for being in debt and doing everything wrong. Uh, yeah. I, it, and so I think that gives you maybe a platform to talk about it because you've been there and you got over it. So talk about how you walked through that and got through all that. Well, of course, um, nine years we lived in severe debt. Yeah. And panic attacks, antidepressants, busted cars, busted house, everything busted. And hopelessness, Which really. Which affects your relationships, too. Yeah, yeah. everything you was think, well, stress. you spend too much, you don't make enough, and that creates conflict. Yeah. Why is that? I mean, obviously, money is so powerful, not because it can buy you things, and, uh, but it also can affect so many areas of your life. Well, I think people's identity comes a lot yeah, of times. I mean, you have to have it. Yeah. Okay, so. As uh, the head of the house and father and husband, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't doing so well. Yeah. And I had little babies, you know, and yeah. I mean, uh, the stress was incredible, which is what brought on the panic attacks and antidepressants and for nine years. I mean, this is, it's a nine years living under the stress. Now we were believers, Tim, yeah. we were already believers, spirit-filled believers, but we were obviously missing something. Right. And, and it's uh, easy to blame God. People go, well, well God yeah. doesn't want to bless me. I'm the one that he doesn't want to take care of. And yeah. it's not true. Yeah. We found out the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow, and that's for everybody. It's just finding the right formula. Yeah, well, there's it's, a lot. <laughs> it's finding the right trust system. In other words, Good. what changed for us was understanding the kingdom. Right. Now the whole concept, right. you know, going to church and hearing the word and all that was, was good, but for some reason it, I had no understanding of how his kingdom operated. Right. And so when he began to teach me that, we got desperate. I mean, it wasn't, it was like a light switch came on. Really? I mean, we, I mean, literally like a light switch came on. It was, things happened so fast, we had yeah. to pinch ourselves over and over again. It's like, did we just see that happen? Right. But, and I mean, we went on from there to, we got out of debt completely, started companies, um, began to have the ability to give, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars away. Yeah. And then went on to launch a church and TV and yeah. anything we can do to get the message out to help people. The thing that's that's I'm glad you said that because the thing about the two of you uh, that I so admire is that you love people you and do. you so want to see people get free. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a passion mm -hmm. and it's a calling for you two, uh, and it's not hard for you, is it? No, because when we were in that situation, we said, God, if you will show us how to get out of debt, yeah. you'll show us how your kingdom operates. We'll spend our life helping other families, helping people. And so we live to do that. It is a passion that we have. Yeah. When we see yeah. people in poverty, it's not of God. It's destruction. It's hurt. It hurts children. It hurts marriages. And so we just have this compassion yeah. to share the kingdom so that we can see people free. Mm -hmm. There's good... There's a good life out there. God, God wants it for everybody and yeah. He paid for it. Jesus paid for it. Yeah. We want to yes. see it get there to them. There is no freedom without financial freedom. Oh, that's, that's good. That's just basically how that's it is. Good. Yeah. yeah. We're showing some video here when you were at EMIC yeah. recently doing the financial revolution. Walk us through what a financial revolution seminar looks like. What, what do you do? Well, we, we, first off, we customize it in size and length. 
But essentially what we do is we spend uh, between five and eight sessions covering how the kingdom operates first, and then we also cover the practical side, yeah. how to get out of debt. Right. And we tell anyone that they can be out of debt in less than seven years, including their house, usually without changing their income. And we've done that for 30, 35 years almost. How many almost. times have you heard this statement? I want, to, I want to throw this statement at you and you give me the answer to this. But Gary, I am so down deep, I'm so deep down in debt, I don't see any way out. Well, that's a lot of people. But here's the key, most people have money they don't know they have. And so when we talk about a financial revolution conference, of course, you take spiritual and practical, right? You got to have the spiritual laws to prosper and you got to have the practical laws to understand how you're losing money and how to, because you live in a natural world. Right. But most people lose money, uh, they don't know the money they're losing because the system is geared against them. Yes. I mean, let's be honest, the banker's not going to tell you how to save interest, the IRS right. isn't going to tell you how to save taxes. Right. I mean, who is the advocate for the, for, the, for the family? Who's the advocate telling you, here's a better way, a, a That's cheaper right. way, here's a better way to use your finances? Yes. Yeah. It's all marketing again, everyone wants your money. Yeah. And there's no one we've seen that is hopeless. Everybody has something yes that they can do, that we can show them. And most people can get out of debt, including their house in less than five years. Five to seven years is what we say. And we've yeah. seen it at EMIC, the average time was five years. Well, let's talk five. about those numbers. Yes, we just, amazing We numbers. just did a, a survey of 218 families there. At, at, now this is at EMIC, just there. Okay. Just yes. there. Yeah. We, 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 uh, in our conferences, we provide a plan free of charge where we actually meet each person, get their data, right. examine it, look for lost money, re you know and show them, but the average time to be out of debt for, of that group, 218 families, was 5.5 years, including their home, without changing their income, and the cash flow freed up of, out of that group was $176,000 a month. Right. And then the interest, if they paid the debt out that they had, if they paid it out completely, uh, and of course if they paid it off, I mean, $128 million in interest would be saved. In just I, 200 and something families. Now think about that, that's money they make. Yeah. That they're losing. After tax dollars, right. they have to then spend, and that's money that belongs in the kingdom and Amen. in those families' pockets. Amen. And you talk about being an influencer, and you can't be an influencer that's right. if you're beholding that's right. to the man, by, that's basically. Right. That's and right. you know, Tim, we see families that they know the word of God, but they don't know the practical side, or people that have the budget side, but then they don't have the word. Yeah. And so we believe God wants to advance his people and to be able to do great things, influence people. Yeah. They've got to have the spiritual truths and the practical right. principles that married. Is so good. They have to have both of them. We see that as a winning combination. Faith without works is dead, right? And I'm told attendance at EMIC and giving has gone up at EMIC. And That's I know the you see result, that everywhere every, you go. Yeah. That's the result every That's time. The result. Yes. I tell, if there's any pastors listening, I tell pastors, yeah. listen, the money's there. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, we don't charge to come in. That's the other thing. We it's, help, a, what, it's all about helping the, the local church. The information you're giving and the freedom that you're, uh, you're providing for people and you don't charge anything for it. And yet, you're blessed. That's our covenant Amen. with him. <laughs> yeah. That's our covenant with him. And, and we said, we'll do this for you, Lord, because we want your people free. And from here, you guys are headed to New Zealand to, do, to do the same thing, we right? We are, yeah. yes. Yeah. So that's the thing. It works wherever it's put to work. Yes, that's the right. kingdom is the kingdom. The yes. word of God, and right. it trumps yeah. anything else. Yeah. This so world system. Are you, do you kind of customize it to where you're going in terms of the country, or uh, is it? Debt, you'll be, debt's debt, debt's brother. debt. It's all over the world, <laughs> yeah. you know, so it works. There's some laws and things that change, you know, each, each country's different, but the kingdom principles are the amazing part. The numbers yeah. are, are really amazing, yeah. but really you teach people how the kingdom operates. It's fun to watch the light bulbs come on <laughs> and you can see them hope rise. Yeah. Yes. And it's, 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 it's so much fun to see So the that. name of your program, Fixing the Money Thing, not just a catchphrase. No, yeah. no, that's what not our job is. Not just a catchphrase, that's, that's, what, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're fixing yeah. the money thing in people's lives. We lived it, we've seen God do it, yeah. and he'll do it for anyone. Yeah, well, uh, we appreciate you guys so much. I know you're so very busy, and for you to come in this morning and do this, I am so honored that you came well, in here to do this. Really. And God speaks to you as you go to New Zealand, Tell them hello for us, would you? We will. Um, we will. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank well, you. speaking of beautiful, I don't know if you the word I would use, but Greg Stevens, my friend, <laughs> is over over in the book table area with some special, special guests. Greg? Tim, I'll take that as a compliment. We are in the exhibit hall and all of the different speakers and singers that all have their, their things here, and I'm with a very familiar face that I want to introduce you to. Pastor Stephen and Candy Lifflor, welcome. We are at your booth. What do we have here? Oh, well, we have 
specials, we have things going on, the t-shirts, our new CD project, times are refreshing and all kinds of great things. So those of you that are watching us on television, of course you can't come to the booth. Well, you can, it's Wednesday, you can still hurry. But those of you in the exhibit hall, I encourage you to come out here. You are pastors of Maranatha Church. Yes, we Chicago, are. Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, USA. Tell me about Maranatha. Well, Maranatha uh, has been uh, operating since 1985, actually. My dad and mom started it, and uh, we became pastors in 2011. We're following what the Lord has given us to do with the church. Church is growing, and the people are developing, and we're reaching out to that south side of Chicago and throughout the Chicagoland area. So you guys have been, now you've been part of the Kenneth Copeland Ministries music yes. team music ministry for what 11 years yes, I think it is mm -hmm. brother Copeland said something to you in Sacramento and I know it's not fun to talk about yourself we look at you doing your thing and last night was just off the charts but he said to you your voice opens the door for him to preach what does that mean well, you know it's really um, the purpose of why we're here we're here to uh, open, set the path, just, just set the way for the prophet to speak. That's our purpose. We're not here for our own agenda, but we're here to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do to prepare the hearts of the people. I remember so many times coming to conference and being so thirsty and hungry, being out in the audience. And so the job of the worship team, you know, the worshiper, is just to hope, just to till the ground of the heart. So if, if worship leaders or people who want to lead worship are watching us, or musicians, what advice do you have that for them with their congregation, with their church? Never set your own agenda. When someone brings you in to their ministry, make sure you're there for their ministry, their vision. And whatever God, you believe in God to do in your life or personal ministry, He'll take care of it because you're sowing seed into the ground of the minister that you're with. And that's our purpose, not to, to shine the light. God is shining the light on you, on you himself. But our job there is to set the pathway for the minister that is to come forth because the word is the most important aspect. And worship opens the ground, it saturates the ground. So when the seed of the word is planted, it has something to go into and it's not rebelled, you know, it's not repelled by the ground, but the ground has just been is that opened what it up. does? Because David was a psalmist. Yes. Is that what it does? It, it, you know, and it would soften, he would soften the heart of the king. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's so important because, you know, people need to be able, sometimes you don't know where people have come in from, you know, whatever their day was. And so the worship gets them to a place of receiving, you know, because whatever happened on the way here at home at work, now your heart's open. And so that how God can reach in with the word, the power of the word of God and do everything the Holy Spirit wants to do. Okay, I have in my hand, hot off the press, brand new album, Stephen and Candy LaFlora, Times of refreshing. Now, this was this was taped live at Eagle Mountain yes, Church. At Eagle Mountain. Tell yes. me about tell me about this this latest project. Well, it's it's a combination of praise, worship. It has some little jazzy things. Pastor Steve, he played the, I think it was Monday night. He did instrumental. We also have a special guest artist, saxophonist Kirk Whalem, who actually is a jazz um, artist. He's a Christian, but he's a, you know he works in a secular area, but he's on the project with us. And so it has just a powerful time. It opens the door for you wherever you are into the presence of God. So if you want uh, the music of Maranatha Church in your home or in uh, your car. Stephen and Candy. Right? Yes. Or if you want a little bit of Southwest all year long. Yes, that's right. Come get this. Come get this. Amen. Or if you're on television, watching my line, just go to StephenandCandy.com. So that's how you do it again. Let's say that again. Stephen and Candy. Stephen and Candy .com, And it's Stephen with the P-H. Stephen and Candy .com. Okay. Tell us about the church and the times. And if you're in the Chicago area. Yes. Amen. Well, Maranatha Church is at 6841 South State Street in Chicago. Come if you want to be blessed and receive the power of the Lord through the word of God. Uh, God's doing great things. Service starts at 930 on Sunday mornings and 630 on Wednesday evening Bible study. So come and be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Guys, thank you so much thank for you, what you do and thank you for, for the wonderful music and taking us into the presence of God every single day here at the Southwest Convention. We're so grateful for it. 
we're so grateful for you and we bless you. Come Jesus. by and see us okay. at the table. Amen. Here we go. Yes, please come by. Those of you sitting in there with Tim, when the service is over, come right here. All right, Tim, <laughs> back to you. All right, Greg, thank you so much. I uh, love St Stephen Candy. They're precious people. Uh, and it's good to be a part of what they're doing as well. Well, this guy here that I've got with me today, 50 years in ministry. 50 years. Welcome, Brother Jerry Savelle. Would you, everybody? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, we've been talking about the fact this is the 39th Southwest Believers Convention. Yes. Not many people have been to every one of them. You are one of those people. I'm one of those people. You've been, been to, to every, every one, one of, of these. Them. Not only every one of them here. Yeah. But every one of them at uh, West Coast. Which we're going back to next yeah. year. And yeah. And then I uh, was in the East Coast conventions. Right. Remember, we used to yeah, do those absolutely. years ago. Yeah, those early, the, the very first Southwest conventions, you, Brother Copeland, Charles Capps, uh, Norval Hayes. Norval Hayes. Yeah. John Osteen was even John here. John Osteen. Yeah. I mean, there were some powerful, powerful men of God were. that were here. Uh, Obviously, you guys didn't know back then that it was going to go this long, did you? <laughs> no, we didn't. No. Of course, I was like 33 yeah, years you were, old. Yeah, you I'm, were still pretty yeah, young. I was still pretty young back then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, did you, in those meetings uh, back then, the, the Word of God that was preached, those were some, those guys had been all over the world, and yet they yeah. were all assembled here for that meeting. Yeah. Uh, the idea of a believer's convention, six days and six nights in the Word of God, that was something Brother Copeland learned of total immersion. Yeah. Uh, you've seen that work, haven't yes, you? Yes, that's right. You've seen that it's, it brings results. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and of course, working with Brother Copeland in those early days and yeah. flying around with him, uh, I got the bug to want to learn how to fly, and I didn't have <laughs> yeah. a whole lot of time, you know. Right. So, you know, going into those flying lesson sessions right. and just locking in for three or four days. Right. And... Uh, it made sense to do that in a believer's convention to get people to come and lock into the right. Word every day. Right. And now, praise God, all these years later, <clears throat> a lot of those people that were coming were very young, just learning. Right. A lot of them are now in full-time ministry, preaching right. all over the world. Right. It's made a great impact. Now, obviously, your relationship with Brother <clears throat> Copeland, you've talked about so many times. We're going to show a few pictures here, uh, and you can see them there over my shoulder. Uh, there's you and Oral Roberts and Brother Copeland. Yeah. I mean, just the, the opportunity that you've had uh, over the years, I know how grateful you are to, yeah. to have done what you've done uh, and the impact that Brother Copeland has made on you. Look at, look at that. What happened to the mustache? <laughs> that was 1981. 1981. In fact, that mustache became gray and you could hardly see it anymore. So that's... I shaved it off one day and it took four, four or five days for my wife to even notice. <laughs> Uh, one of the messages that you have preached uh, over the years is favor, yeah. the favor of God. Yeah. Where does that come from and how do you get it? Well, that's the first thing the Lord taught me, even when I was still living in Shreveport before coming to Fort Worth to work with Brother Copeland. Uh, I, had, I had never even heard the subject before. Yeah. I didn't know you could have favor with God. Right. And one day in prayer, he said, there will come a day when your name will be known around the world for the favor of God that's on your life and ministry. Wow. Now, I didn't dare tell anybody that because I was less than three weeks old in the Lord. You don't go around saying, hey, guess what? You know, and I just wrote that in my journal. Right. And I still have that journal. Really? And I wrote it in there. And of course, years later, uh, I began preaching on, well, I started preaching on favor right then. But years later, it became like my signature message, you know. Right. And... Uh, it's come to pass. My yeah. name is known around the world for the favor of God. It, it absolutely is. That is yeah. the truth. Now, you've preached some interesting messages around the world, but particularly in this building, you've preached some interesting messages. We've got some video of a message that you preached in this building one time where you came out in this crazy oh, looking armor. You're not going to show that, are well, you? Well, we might. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how. So the darts there in your shield, that's, that's the, the darts from the enemy, right? Yeah, that's right. I yeah. even got one in my backside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll show it to us here in a minute. Now, tell us the premise of this well, particular message. A young lady in California who is 
Uh, she makes, she's a costume designer. Right. And she's a believer. She'd come to the meetings all the time. And she said, if I, <laughs> she said, if I make you a costume about the armor guy, would you wear it? And I said, sure. Well, I wasn't sure she would really ever make it. Right. Well, she shows up here with it. Now I've got to do now it. Now you got to do it. So I put this on and I'm standing right behind the curtain here. <laughs> Brother Copeland comes around the corner and said, what are you doing now? You know, I said, I'm going to make a point. <laughs> and boy, did you ever, yeah. you made the point. And you also did the one, the canoe. Ro- oh, rolling yeah. Rolling back upstream. Uh, now, that was Brother Copeland's favorite message really? I did back then. In fact, we were in Fresno, California, about 1973, somewhere along in there. Yeah. And uh, that's when the Lord gave me that illustration about living by faith is like going upstream in a canoe. Right. So I'd act it out, you know. Right. Well, every time I was with him and I got ready to preach, he'd say, you going to preach about that canoe today? I said, no, I was going to talk about something else. He said, uh, you going to preach about that canoe today? <laughs> I said, no, I was going to talk about something. He said, are you going to preach about the canoe today? I said, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to preach. <laughs> so, you know, God and Kenneth Copeland have authority in my life. <laughs> okay, and you've also had a lot of leeway. They've pretty much let, let, let you do whatever. You rode a motorcycle in here one year. Oh, yeah, I rode a motorcycle while. in here yeah, one time. I mean, you, there, there's almost nothing you won't do for the gospel, is there? Yeah, one time... <laughs> out in the West Coast Convention, right. I came in with a Hawaiian Aloha shirt. Yes, you did. And I preached in the day services <laughs> in it. So Creflo walks in and he says, can we do that? I said, no, we can't, but I can. I'm first born of many brethren. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what is one of your favorite memories of the Copelands over the years and your relationship with them and all the things that you guys have done together? In fact, you just went to Nigeria with Brother yeah. Copeland, yeah. Uh, to Bishop of Unipo's church. Yeah. And that's a big place. That's like oh 50,000 people. Have you ever preached in front of that many people at a time? I had before, yeah, yeah. Uh, down in South Africa. I'd done that before. And, uh, but that place is so amazing. Yeah. The sweetest people, I'm telling you, I just fell in love with them all. I, I met a lot of the pastors that work with him back when I did some crusades in Nigeria back in 1986. Uh-huh. And, but it had been a long time since I'd been back to Nigeria. I've been all over Africa, but not right. Nigeria. Right. But it was such a joy and an honor to be there and to just see what God is doing. And uh, they're such humble people, such sweet people. And yeah. it was just an amazing experience. Of course, being with Brother Copeland is always a, a plus. But that's a bunch of people. 50,000 people at one time. They had 50,000 people inside and another 50,000 out in the tents outside. Wow, overflow. Overflow, yeah. (laughs) Wow. And Brother Copeland was in two of the services, and it was that many people, but they still had two more to go. Wow. And, and of course, we had to leave after the first two services, but it's an amazing place. What are some of the most memorable places that you've been with Brother Copeland in all these years? Well, some of those early meetings in South Africa were just really... um, uh, memorable and special uh, with Ray McCauley, Pastor Ray McCauley. Sure. And uh, of course, we I did uh, the Believers Convention in, <clears throat> in the UK uh, when it was just uh, Brother Copeland, Gloria, and myself with the uh, three speakers. And we had some great, we had some breakthrough meetings there. When yes. we first started those, I think there were more people outside picketing than there were inside <laughs> listening. But over a period of time, I'll, I'll never forget the meeting we were in. I think it was in uh, uh, either Brighton uh-huh. or Birmingham, one or the other. Right. And, and there was a change that took place. There was a breakthrough. And boy, yeah. the crowd started coming and yeah. people got hungry for the word of faith. Yeah. And uh, I've got to watch that all these years. You know, when we first started with Brother Copeland, we'd go to places and Sometimes there wouldn't be a hundred people in the evening service, and uh, but to watch at how it grew and and uh, and watch how this ministry's grown, yeah. it's one of the, been one of the greatest joys of my life, and yeah. I, I feel so very honored to have had this relationship with them for 50 years now. Wow! Yeah. And you you just celebrated your 53rd wedding wedding anniversary, yes. correct? Right. You and Carolyn went on. A, yeah, give them a hand. Uh, you went on an Alaskan cruise. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Alaska cruise. Did you see some fun stuff? Cool stuff? Well, there? it was, it was beautiful. We enjoyed it. We had a great time. Had yeah. another couple, two couples with us. 
and we had a wonderful time. Yeah. But I have toured Alaska on a motorcycle, and that's the way to see Alaska. Oh, I'll imagine. Yeah, oh, that's I'll the bet. way to see it. I'll bet. Yeah. Well, my gosh. Next time, call me. We'll, okay. I'll ride on the back with you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brother Jerry, like thank John you John so Wayne much. would say yeah. that'll be that'll the day. Be the day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing this today. And thank hey, my you. pleasure. And I'm thank so you proud for... of you, Tim. Oh, we go you, back sir. a long time, we, yes, too. Yes, sir, we do. I'm honored to be your friend. And thank you Praise so God. much. Thank you. Uh, you know, can you give this guy another hand? I mean, we just love Brother Jerry. Now, he is actually the first speaker this morning. So I'm going to let him go here in just a second so he can get ready to come back and preach. But I want to take you back to yesterday and show you what happened on day two here at the Southwest Believers Convention. I'm saying something. This is going to be your conference. This is going to be, this conference was designed for you. Well, every promise that you read, and there are plenty of them that God made, he is quite capable of performing them. Amen. You don't get to be called God if you can't do things like that. When he created man, he did something no other species he ever did this to. See, the anointing of God is on Gabriel. But you see, when you got born again, he put his name in you. His name is in you. In you, Christ, in you, the hope of glory. The atmosphere is charged with faith and just, just the freshness and um, of course the Holy Spirit is just doing stuff in everybody's lives and it's just a wonderful experience just to be here, really. What happened when they got that man and four of them got him on a bed and couldn't take him in by the door? Didn't they try to take him in? They couldn't get in. Too many people in there just looking. Don't plan to do anything with the Word, just in there looking. So they're going to do something with this word. So they're going to get under the influence. And they're going up on the roof. Tore the roof open. And let him down in. Oh, come on, yeah, somebody. How that's about awesome. that? We've been having a good time in here, haven't we? Three days left. Three days left. Wow, that's great. It goes fast. It starts to kind of accelerate from here. So You it's look nice wonderful. today. Really? You, look, you do. You look nice you get, today. What? Are you going to do that? No. I, I, After yesterday? No, I really felt bad. Does this, no. does this uh, meet your standard Well, of it does for the most part. For the most part. Because I, I felt bad Wait. about yesterday. I know I felt bad, so I, wanted, I, I had something I want to give you. Uh, I want this is a gift for me to you. These are batteries. Oh, These are batteries for when the ones in that tie go out, you can replace them. God will always have somebody for your love walk. <laughs> well, you know. And for me, it's a guy it, named Tim. <laughs> oh my. Mr. Monochrome yeah. Blue. <laughs>